So Darren, we've seen how these walls are built, and I think this is the stack of walls that we saw just on the other side. Yes, that is the stack of the walls you just saw the other side going through the lamination plant with yep. Dave. And they're now brought in here, getting ready to put on the trailers. Yep. We're still on the 22 FQS anniversary series. Gotcha. So these walls, as you can see on that trailer, were just put on that trailer there. Yep. So we're gonna head down here and start looking at the roof construction process. Sounds good to me. This is the third and final video of our Outdoors RV factory tour series. In part one, we saw how the frame is constructed and the layers that are put into it to make it a four season trailer. In part two, we saw how the walls are made in the temperature and humidity controlled lamination shop. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you can find the links in the video description. So now we're down here and looking at again the layers of rugged constructionness, and we choose on every single Outdoors RV trailer to use a radius crowned roof. Now a couple of features with this. When it's radius like this going from side to side, you get full insulation value here yeah. as you get full insulation value over here. Does that make sense? It does, as opposed to it pinching off in the corners. And, yes. Yeah. And so if we're building a climate designed Four Seasons trailer and we now put a roof on it and now it's pinched from here to here with no insulation, what's our point and what we're trying to do? Yeah, exactly. So this was another key component. Gotcha. Also, being that it's crowned like this, it gives us an extra five inches of headroom throughout the entire trailer from the front to the rear. And we've really noticed that in ours. We're, we're not tall people, but we've had guests come over and things and they, they've instantly noticed that the dome in the roof makes it feel a lot more spacious. Yes, and it's a, that's a sidebar feature of our rug and construction and climate design. Yep. But we also want to look at those creature comforts for not only ourselves, but for you <laughs> when you're camping. So. Totally, love it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this truss and this truss will actually go like this upside down when over here, where they're gonna be building the roof. Let's gotcha. go take a quick Let's look take at it that. Over. And so in looking at this, there's that truss we're looking at and it's now upside down. And so now we're gonna put your ceiling panel in. Yep. And you can see there's the bow of the roof you can see. And they're putting it in four by eight panels that go all the way across. And now another rugged feature that we do, instead of just putting a piece of bat molding and stapling it on every seam, how good do you think that's gonna be when you're going up and down all the rough roads? <laughs> We don't yeah. want you or ourselves after camping for so many months or whatever, going up there and saying, well, my wrist's falling apart. Yep. And so we use a snap track batten system that goes in there. Okay. And so you might've noticed this man on your trailer. If you look, it looks very seamless up yes. there. There is a little track in here that has a little um, fastener. You can see that this is gonna go on here. That's gonna go right inside that track. And then a pneumatic hammer will go in there and put this down all the way. That is not going to come off on the rugged rough roads. Yeah. And that holds everything together a lot tight. Yes. And that's not just the fastener. This is also fastened on here, but that is where the two panels come together. Yeah. So then if you were to look at the other side of this, on the other side of this, we would have put our air conditioning ducting in here. Yep. And that's what we would have seen here. And then that's just going to be then put up on the trailer and we can go up there and take a look. Let's do that. You can now see what Dave was talking about before with the fasteners going through here into that aluminum and into that wood, that wood tie-in stick. And then you can see right across over here, there's the um, AC ducting that's going in there. And then also what's gonna be happening in this department here is the roof electrical is all gonna be going in here. So right past this truss, you can see there's a, a light that's being installed right there. Then if we go down this way a little farther, there's another light you can see being put in there. Here's a plumbing vent that's coming up over here. And now here's some of that wiring that's coming on. And here's that wiring harness that Dave was talking about. Gotcha. There's a speaker that's gone involved in there. So most of the wiring as it goes around the trailer it doesn't go under the floor. It actually goes through the roof and around. Yes, absolutely. So now what would happen in this point position right here is the next step here would be they were going to be insulating the roof. So again, as part of our old process of the Climate Design Four Seasons, we are now going to put three layers of insulation in the roof. So we're going to start with a layer of Pink Panther insulation, another layer of Pink Panther insulation just like we had in the floor, yep. and then we're going to put the reflective blanket insulation up here to make a three-layer insulation on the roof. Then on top of that, what they're doing here in the next station is they're putting the marine grade 
three quarter, three eighths inch plywood roof decking on the roof. And that plywood we actually love because when we mount our solar panels, so many people worry that there's nothing to screw into on their roof. But we knew we had that three eighths plywood underneath that we could really get a good anchor into. Yeah, and so we're not having to, or you're not having to go in and add extra blocking exactly to that to be able to put those solar panels on and your trailer has how many solar panels we've got 600 watts six panels on six panels now. 600 watts that would have been a real inconvenience for you to have to go in and redeck the roof to put those in yeah so now here's the next stage we were just talking about that 3 8 inch marine grade plywood that has now been installed on the trailer and this is actually a really good angle where you can also see the curvature of the roof it's good for water runoff a curb has incredible strength and then we already saw that whole curb allowed us to put that three layers of insulation from side to side. Another thing in looking at all the different layers that make it a climate design four seasons trailer, this is the back of the fridge. We use a Norcold fridge. And in looking at that, we asked Norcold to put on standard in every single trailer that we build, a cold weather kit that's attached to the fridge. That allows this fridge to operate in ambient temperatures down to zero degrees. Where most RV fridges, when you get below 32 degrees, is start not performing as well because they're not designed for the colder climate. Here at Outdoors RV, standard in every trailer. About 34 degrees, this fridge has a, t has a temperature gauge in it that will preheat and start the ammonia to keep it running and operating at below 32 degrees. Okay, so now we've got to the position where we just watched the 3 8 inch marine grade plywood being installed in the trailer. It's now come to the next station. And what in this station right now, they've got the one piece rubber roof installed on the trailer. So that's a single sheet of rubber that's spooled out from over there all the way along. And what it really comes down to on this is like you'll heard Dave Van Cleve talk about, it's the assembly process and putting this together. And you can look at this roof. You can look how the one piece went side to side, no big bubbles on the roof. And you can look at the fasteners along the side, straight, even, lots of fasteners on the side. That's a well put together roof as far as from the assembly side of things. So Darren, one of the things that I'm noticing is a bit different here is this front cap. On our mountain series, we just have the bonded fiberglass, but the titanium series and some of the others have these fiberglass caps on the front. Tell me more about these. Yeah, so what you're seeing actually here is actually another brand new feature that you're here at the plant at the right time. This is a brand new fiberglass cap that we've designed. It's going on our 10th year anniversary series trailer. It is in the silver fiberglass, which yep. is part of the 10th anniversary edition. Now, a couple things with the fiberglass caps themselves, in that we try to buy some stuff locally as we can, like our plywoods we try to buy from Portland, Oregon. If you're to look out there, we're seeing where a lot of uh, stuff's from either Montana, Canada, Idaho. Yeah. This product right here is made up in Yakima, Washington, okay. which is not too far from yep. us. And so we work with that supplier. It's our new fiberglass cap. And one thing also that they've done is they've come up with, we on the, because of our customers go a lot of off-roading and stuff, if we just used a fiberglass all the way to the front, this front end could get chipped up in different things. Totally. And so we've been using a bed liner, yep. and then we've been putting some diamond plate on some models in the front of the trailer. Gotcha. They've developed a new bed liner material on here that we've even taken little razor blades and stuff, and you can't hardly even scratch it and wow. scuff, scuff it. I think we need some of that stuff. And so it's now brand new on this, and we're really excited about that. And you're gonna see right over here, we're gonna to get to see a little bit of the yeah. anniversary series decal being put on the trailer. So now this is one of those front caps that we just saw in that stack there, but now lying down and we've got the decals going on. Yes, so this is being prepped to put on the trailer. And so they take it out of the stack there, they prep it down here. They will put up, start putting on the decals here. Another feature is here's the new anniversary series decal that's going on the trailer. And if Very we nice. go right over here, we're gonna get to see where this was installed on the next trailer on the assembly line. Perfect, and then down here, this is the new liner you were talking about. Yes, this is the new liner that we're talking about here, and you can just feel it's got some extra grit and stuff that the other one did not have. But it's not it's not rubbery, it's like a plasticky thing as well, that's nice. Yes, we're, they were telling us about this material, so well, we're always into something that's a little bit better. Plus. Yeah. And they said, we think this would fit in nicely with your company, so they put it on a test cap a while ago. Yeah. We tested it and then we're going with it in production. I love it. Let's go and see one on the trailer. Yeah. Well, here, here we are in front of the new cap. That thing looks astonishing. I love this. Well, thank you. It's both not only just durable, but it also has a really good modern look to it yeah. too. And so what we did is we went over there, we saw the caps in the packing material, saw it on the ground where they started putting things together. Yeah. Now we've seen it actually physically installed on a trailer. It looks phenomenal. I love that decal in the middle. 
That looks incredible. So what we're having this de this department here is when they're going to start putting on windows will go in here, which we put thermal pane windows yep. as part of our climate design package on everything we build. And what does thermal pane mean? Talk me through that. If we were to build all the stuff you've seen so far in the climate design package and then put single pane windows in the trailer, yeah. single pane windows have like an R value of zero, basically. Yeah. It's just a C in and out of. So we partnered with our window supplier and put thermal pane windows in every trailer. It gives you extra insulation compared to a single pane window. Now in okay. looking at it, even people building a house in Phoenix, Arizona, what do you think they put for windows in Phoenix, Arizona? Single pane glass? I bet not. I bet not. They're gonna use a thermal paint type window because the insulation works both in the winter time and in the summertime. And the makes and sense? We, we really feel that. It's, uh, it makes a big difference. As soon as you get those windows closed and they can really start to either keep the heat in or keep that heat out. It's, uh... So do you think it makes sense from us as a company to make thermal paint windows an option or should they be standard? I think they should be a standard. Right, and they are. They're a standard feature in everything we build. So That's awesome. But you do do two different designs of windows, right? We do have two different styles, but both styles are thermal paint windows. I see. So we have a frameless window that we put on all the titanium series products. Yep. And that is really a, a window that started out in the motorhome group yes. quite a few years ago, went to some high-end fifth wheels. They look really nice. They look really nice. A sleek design window, no frame on the outside. Yeah. Now, it still has the thermal pane window capability of it for the insulation value. Now, the pro of that window is it's an awning style window, so it opens up like this. Yes. And so if it's raining outside, which we do get some rain here in the mountainous west. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, <laughs> yes. That someone could have that window open, getting some breeze through there. Yeah. That style. Then on the mountain series, our backcountry series, and our trail series, even our anniversary series, we're going to use the framed window, still the thermal slide. pane, and it's got a slider yes. in it. Some people, there's a feature of the slider window is you can open it up and get more of a cross breeze going yeah. back and through. And we love that on ours. That's the one we've got. That's and you've got. Some of the camping we do, having that cross breeze coming through, I want as much air coming through as possible. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Why don't we take a look inside this trailer? Because this is now looking a lot like a trailer. Yes. And I'd love to see how it's looking inside. Okay, let's go take a look. And so now a few things that you've seen here that we've seen along the way. If you look at the roof, you can see that the, there's the speakers from the inside. Here's the lights from the inside. There's the vent there on that side, which could be a max air vent fan yep. that could go in there. Uh, this is going to be a skylight that goes in this route here. You can see the stereo has been put in there. The TV will be put in, in the next station up. The range has now been put in. And you can see it's starting to look like a trailer. It looks a lot like a trailer, yeah. So one of the things I noticed in here is we have this lovely laminate floor, this uh, linoleum floor here. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a piece of carpet here. What, what's the carpet for? So just like you for us, we would love to have a trailer that had zero carpet yeah. in it at all. That's one thing we would really like. The way a lot of the slide out systems are designed, as you can see, here's a slide out system that's on uh, rollers, right? And when that slide out goes in and out, it goes in and cover, goes right here on the carpet. Gotcha. So to have the carpet and the pad, it really works well for the slide out to go in and out here and provides a little bit more of a insulation barrier between where that slide out is, the floor, and this here. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Does that make sense? It does, it does. But we I want to keep this back as far as we can for the walking area. Exactly. And, and we've heard that from a few people that they, they kind of love the, the easy clean floor and this one piece of carpet. They're like, why? But that, that makes sense that it's got to be there because of this slide coming onto it. Yes. And then the other thing I've noticed in here as well is this red tape. What's this red tape all about? So one thing you talked to Dave over there about testing. Yes. And so we're going to do the water test over there, and then Dave will go into some more testing that we're going to do. Yep. Starting around this corner here, on this particular assembly line, there's a nice lady named Danny who's been in this uh, RV world for a long, long time, and maybe we'll get to meet her coming up here, is she will start walking around the trailer and looking at places where she says, hey, this may be maybe a ding here, this may be crooked here. Gotcha. And she'll start marking things throughout this line here of things that we can improve on. And she'll get with the group leader yep. and say, hey, here's something here. If it's something that she's seen repetitive and maybe that started happening over there. Go and have a chat with them. Go and have a chat with them. That makes sense. So quality is baked in not just at the end as a final check, but really every stage is kind of like do the install and test it. Check the quality is there at every single stage. Now, another thing with that, because you're right on that, is that she ultimately works with Rick Ewing, the service manager. I see. So that's her direct 
So any warranty things coming back, she's aware of as well, and he's aware of these things. Yes, along with the communication with Dave Van Cleve, the director of manufacturing. I but see. that system has worked really well, and that's a system that Mr. Nash put in years and years and years ago. And things will always get through this process, I guess. There's always going to be something that slips through the net somehow. But having that feedback loop through the warranty in the service department means that hopefully they will stop happening again. And that's the whole process with this. As you've seen now being on your second tour here, yep. right, is we have one robot. The one robot was the, the button over there the guy pushed on the X and Y yep. axis to route out. Yep. Everything else is done by hand. And so we are humans, but we do listen. Yeah, that's just part of the listening process of how we can continually improve on what we're doing. And not just listen, but also change. And we've seen a few things that we've pointed out as we've been going around saying, oh, it's not like that on our trailer. And you're like, no, we changed that because we heard from our customers and they said this thing. And that's that's super cool. It, on the one hand, it's kind of like, well, I wish my trailer had that. But you can't have everything, right? As long as it is changing and improving over time, that means every trailer that leaves is a little bit better than the last one. And that will continue to change. And next week, there may be another feature that we've learned here or from another couple customers or through warranty yep. that we're going to make the adjustment to. We're going to continue to do that and have been for years. That's awesome. Okay, so now I'm looking at, we looked at some insides of this trailer. Let's look at some of the things on the outside. You're going to see now that the ladder's been installed on here. And one thing that we do, again, looking at a better part on the trailer is this is a big tube ladder that's on the trailer versus the skinny ladder that goes on the trailer. People like to get up on their roof and they look at the skinnier ladder that's out there. It's like, whoa, can I really get up on that? And you saw the blocking and stuff that we had in the lamination department. We went ahead and spent the extra money to put this big tube ladder on, standard on everything now. Now, if we go over here on this side of the trailer, the next step that's going to happen here is they're going to put in the thermal pane windows like we talked. They'll yep. start putting in the entry door. They'll put in the outside speakers. Yep. This is the back of the, drawing the a blank, stove. range. Yeah, yeah. So Darren, one of the mods that we did on our trailer was to add some extra insulation um, into this front storage bay. Although the, the doors themselves are already insulated, we just felt that the bedside tables had got a little bit cold overnight. And I talked to you about that and you said, we saw your video on that, we saw the mod, and we're gonna put that in action. Have you got it in here? So yes, we did see the mod. We do have PD meetings at the plant. That mod came in from us to our PD meeting. Yep. We sat down and talked about that and says, okay, well, we haven't really heard anything about that. Mr. Dave Van Cleve had his trailer down at the uh, river yep. that weekend. He went down to his trailer and said, let's verify what we're hearing here. Yep. And he actually was like, oh yeah, it's kind of cold <laughs> on that nice day. It is cold. And so always looking for more insulation or a better insulated yep. thing. And what's really fascinating about this is it wasn't timed this way. This is the first trailer that we have it in. <laughs> That's awesome. And so if you look underneath here, you're gonna see, Yes. we now have it insulated. That's my insulation. And thank you both for that product suggestion. So. Absolutely. I'm so pleased to see that. That is so cool. So now as you can see in this station here, that the roof's been sealed. There's the gutter that's been on the roof, the max air vent fan, the air conditioner's been put on, the TV antenna's been put on. This particular model is a backcountry series and it has a standard 170 watt solar panel. And let's go over and talk a little bit about the solar. Okay, and looking at solar and solar ready, I will tell you when we first started here, we hardly were putting on a solar panel. And I camped in trailers without any solar panels. We had the option to put on a 95 watt solar panel at that point. I put that on my trailer. And it's amazing the difference as far as when you are off grid camping, what solar does for you. And now we're putting solar and more and more on trailers, standard on particular series of trailers. And so in listening to our customer and wanting to make that more convenient for them in this being able to camp more places, hit more times of the year, that we put standard on all of our trailers, solar ready. And what solar ready means is we partnered with Zamp Solar out of Bend, Oregon. They were again looking at local suppliers and they came to us and helped us design our system. And they have up here in the front of the trailer, you're going to see a control box, which is a plug and play control box. And we have ran per their recommendations, eight gauge wire from there straight down to where the battery's at. And so every trailer comes standard with the control box and the eight gauge wire already built in. And then on the inside of the trailer of the front bedroom cabinets above the bed, there's going to be a hatch that we've already pre drilled out with the wires there 
So if either from our dealerships or you as a customer can easily go in, pull the wires out of that hatch, plug in your solar controller, come up here, plug and play into the roof. Here comes your solar panel. Perfect. And that's exactly how we did our solar setup. We were able to use the wiring that you guys already run to put 600 watts of solar on the roof of our RV. So I see behind us here a stack of walls, and I think this is something like what we saw being built over in the lamination plant when we saw some slide out walls being made. Yes, and so in looking over there today with Dave, you saw some things on there about slide out in walls and stuff being routed yep. out. One thing we do is the same, the slide out walls are the same walls that are on the side of the trailer. Gotcha. Including- But smaller. But smaller, <laughs> including the slide out roof. Okay. The slide out roof is the same two inch bonded laminated slide out roof. Gotcha. Uh, that was a feature that Dave Van Cleve actually brought to the party for us here. Yeah. And so now those are stacked here and you can see the first one there is being brought to here. And this is the start of the slide out department. Nice. So the trailer we just left, the next thing that would be being installed there is the slide out. So the trailer is going to come down that side, the slide's going to come down here and they'll, they'll join. Yes. I'd love to see that. So let's go take a look over here. So this slide actually looks a lot like the one in ours. I recognize the wiring coming up in the corner. Yep. We've got this, which I assume is where it slides in over the bit of carpet that we saw. Yes. What else am I looking for in here? Okay, so in looking at this, like we just talked, two inch bonded aluminum frame walls here, yep. that wall, back wall, all of these, right? Then another thing that came from Rick Ewing, our service manager, was slide out floors. So looking at slide out floors, we use three quarter inch plywood, Yep. Wow, that's really thick. Look how thick that is, right? Again, wow. no OSB floor. And then underneath this, we laminate fiberglass to this. Interesting. Oh yeah, I can feel it. You can feel yeah. it. So that would have been put through the lamination department over there. Yep. So why do we do that? So looking at a slide out, you saw the rollers over there. Yep. It's gonna go in and out mm. over time, right? So looking at yours, you've now been in your trailer for 13 months. Yep. Every day. That slide out's been in and out a lot. A yeah. lot. <laughs> So in looking at this, instead of using a woven material that could eventually over time do yeah, what? Just fall apart. Fall apart. Rick Ewing says, we're not doing that because I don't want to tell a customer down the road of how you replace that yeah. is you take the whole slide out box out. Yeah. Well, there's gotta be a better way. Something more we durable. chose to laminate fiberglass onto here and having an issue in 10 years with that issue. That's fantastic. That's good to know. Yeah, so. So the slides get built here. And then can we see one joining into a trailer? Yes. In fact, there's one up here being put in right now. So let's, let's go up there take and take a look. look. This is looking a lot more like a trailer now. Looks like we got the slide in here. Yes. And so we were just looking at the individual components of the slide out being put together. Yep. It's going to be taken off of the slide out system over there. Yeah. And you can see with a crane hoist, it's going to be Brought put up the inside the trailer. And then the electrical is going to be hooked up. The slide out system is going to be hooked up. Yep. And they'll test it right here. And all of a sudden, now you have a completed slide out in your trailer going down the road. That's awesome. And then I noticed in terms of the slide out mechanism, on ours, we have the Schwintec rail down the side. This looks like something different. What have you got in here? So we use two different types of slide out systems. We use both a rack and pinion slide out system yep. or the Schwintec slide out system. There's pros to both systems. One pro with the system that you have in your trailer is that it allows us to put holding tanks in places where we couldn't necessarily put holding tanks before. Ah, interesting. Because the rack and pinion system takes up all that space. Takes up all that space in there. Yeah. But as far as the functionality of both, we use them religiously in both in all of our brands. Yeah. It just depends on okay, Darren, what are we looking for for this trailer? We want to put this big holding tank in. The furnace has to go over here. Let's use gotcha. this type of slide out system. And as has been working great, but I, I'm intrigued by this design as well. It looks interesting. And I recognize this door. Tell me about this. So when we looked at better place, better ways to insulate a trailer, everything out there in exterior shower had the quarter inch yeah. thin Good plastic little. door. We said, there's gotta be a better way. And so like we do on our luggage doors by putting the big one inch thick luggage doors, yep. we took our design team and did the same thing here. So now you open this up and now your exterior shower is inset behind the same one inch thick door. So it's really well protected. It's not going to freeze. Right. And there's obviously like a cavity behind there into your living space. So you've added more insulation across your living space as well. And being more, this being more inside, it could also pick up on some of the, the heat and stuff from the inside of the trailer. A little exactly. bit more. 
So Dave, one of the things I've learned over the last couple of days spending some time with you here is that you guys really, really care about quality and you really care about finding opportunities for things to go wrong, identifying them, fixing them before they leave this building. What's going on right now at this station? Uh, right now, they are doing a high pot on the AC and the DC legs. They plug the coach into a high pot and what that's going to do is tell us whether we have a short in the unit or if we're having wire breakdown. Gotcha. So it's really checking that all the connections are good, nothing's shorting, yep. nothing's touching where it shouldn't be. Correct. Once they get that done, then they will do a, a light test. They will actually supply power through a panel to each individual light. Right now they have your front light yep. and your dump light on and they're going to make sure all those lights and or electrical components are functioning every single correctly. thing works and like i say this is one of many tests we test we test uh in several stations on this once they get this complete they'll go back to the water lines they're going to do in this every all the faucets are hooked up in your water heater they're going to go to a 40 pound test so they don't hydraulic the water heater yeah and after that test passes then they'll move on to the propane. They have all appliances hooked up. They'll put three pounds of pressure in the t uh, through the tanks yep. and do the whole propane system and make sure. Nothing, uh, correct. That's fantastic. And then by the time it makes it to the end of this building, is that testing complete then? Abs absolutely not. We will do it one more time before it goes <laughs> to the dealer. Wow. We and yeah. then the dealer should do it. Then the dealer does it. Wow, so things really should get caught before they should. a and customer gets that. That's, that's why we have the processes we do. And what happens if the customer does find a problem? How, how does that get handled? Usually if they have the problem, naturally you're gonna let someone know. Sure. They, call their, they should call their dealer and the dealer should take care of any problem that they have. But anything that comes up beyond that would if make it If it comes appear. beyond that, we have service techs on the yeah. phone if we can't talk them through it or they're not comfortable with doing it themselves, we put out the welcome mat and they can go, come to our factory and we'll help them out. And if you see that issue coming up more than once, does that come back into this building? Oh, absolutely, it? absolutely. Then it's audits. We audit and make sure our people are doing the correct procedures in the correct s sequence. That's perfect, cool. We're getting very, very close to the end of this uh, manufacturing line here. What happens at this last couple of stages here? Well, this last stage, it just came out of the final department, which final is going to put in the finishing moldings, fascia, cushions, I'm seeing a sofa, sofa in there. Yeah. sofas, mattress, and it moves, then it will move up here and they'll start cleaning the unit. And then we have our QC people have followed this unit since it came out of oh, wow. the metal yep. catwalk and they start hanging tape. Yep. That procedure is, is what we call squawk. Okay. There's something to squawk about. And we're <laughs> squawking about anything that isn't complete, crooked, not up to our standard, trying to get all that complete before it rolls out our door. That's awesome. And we joined you guys yesterday as you went around doing some of that stuff as well. And some of the things you were finding, Diana and I were standing there going, what have they seen here? These are some really minor things that you're picking up. Yes. Uh, uh, we try to be the best that we can yeah. in the house we live. Yeah, and that's just part of our game. Uh, as far as manufacturing goes, it, the deal years ago stopped here and we've taken it further with a PDI process, a manager buy. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that when we were here a couple of years ago was something that impressed us so much. One of the reasons we then went on to buy the Outdoors RV, we weren't looking for a, a luxury RV. We wanted a really well-built RV, something that was just going to really be comfortable and nice to be in, but really well-built. Everything from the platform, the chassis, the frame, and the axles, right up to the fit and finish at the end. And that's what we've seen in our outdoors RV. And uh, and yeah, you can see it through this process. You can see the care and attention that goes into that. Yeah, that's our story. Yeah. So Dave, we are standing at the edge of the building here, just a. Well, 100 feet that way is where we saw a, a rolling frame come in a little while ago. We followed the assembly line all the way around and now we're standing at really well finished trailer, right? Correct. Where does it go from here? Well, it just doesn't roll out our door and go to a home. 
Okay. This unit will go out and will line up with the with the day's production, which will do a final manager buy. We will go through and re-squawk the unit. Any war possible warranty issues, fit and finish, we're looking at the whole package deal. Once we have looked through the uh, inefficiencies on the coach, yep. they will again, people, we have a crew that will go in, clean that up, gotcha. and the wheel don't stop there, then it moves to our PDI department. Wow. So one of the things I was really sounded by yesterday is you, you, I hadn't realized this. You're telling me that despite all the checks and things that happen in here, even when it leaves here, every trailer goes through another PDI process to look at the whole thing, now that everything's kind of put together. But not just that, every single trailer, nothing leaves here without managers laying eyes on that trailer. That is correct. That's incredible. That's really cool. I would love to see some of that PDI process. Is that something we can take a look yeah, at? Yeah, let's go. So Casey, you are the lead here in the PDI department. Tell correct. me what your role is involving. Well, my role is to walk into this unit and behave like an owner. Like I'm gonna buy this unit. Yeah. So when this unit rolls out of here, it's ready for sale. It's ready for somebody to walk right into it and say, I love it. And you've kind of put your stamp on it to go, I am happy with this trailer. Absolutely. And Absolutely. how do you do that? What are you looking for? Well, the first thing we do is we start from the outside and we walk do a complete walk around. We look top to bottom, making sure there's no defects, nothing out of the normal. Uh, if there is, we either correct it or have somebody come out and correct it. Gotcha. So you can, you can actually not just identify the things, but you can fix a lot of them right here. Correct. And then if you see things that you think, like you've seen it a couple of times today or something, do you right. wander over and have a chat with the guys over there? Correct. Yeah, we try to we try to prevent the issue from reoccurring. So the sooner we can get the unit in the bay, and if we recognize that there's an issue, yeah, we stop it immediately online. Perfect. Yeah. And by the time it leaves here, it is good to go for the customer. Yep, that's the plan. So we like flood the tanks. We do the water test, electrical test, all functionalities, and then we go into fit and finish, which is making it beautiful. Perfect. And I see you're doing one of the tests here. Can Correct. You tell me what you're doing with this. So test? right here, this is our city inlet water fill. So we're pumping air into the system, air over water. So this whole unit's completely full of water right now. Okay. And then we add 80 PSI to it, which is above standard. Yeah. Um, our tanks will withhold 150 PSI. Wow. But one, a 80, an 80 pound test for 10 to 15 minutes is above standard. And so at the end of, of 10 minutes, you want to see that it's still reading as 80 PSI Correct. And then we come out and if there's an issue, then we start searching. We start from front it. back to, and we go to the front. And that happens on just a sample of trailers or every That trailer? happens on every single trailer every time. It's mandatory. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, Casey, thank you so much. Really Absolutely. appreciate that. No I'll problem. I'll let you get back to it. All right. Thanks. So we've had a fantastic time today doing the factory tour here at Outdoors RV. And we have seen how a trailer like the one behind me started here, went into this factory. And when it left, it comes out here into this lineup. And this is what the manager is going to check later before the final PDI. And it ends up in the hands of the customer. It's been a really, really fun experience. So Darren, Dave, thank you so much for your time today on taking us through that. It's been really interesting and fascinating to see what's changed since we did it a couple of years ago. So thank you for that. So we really enjoyed this factory tour, but if other people want to do a factory tour, how do they do that? Simply give us a call, go to our website. Um, you can look and see the, uh, different times and stuff on there. Generally we do tours every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And one thing we've done since we started here is we're proud of what we're building here. Yeah. And the customers that are looking at these products, sometimes they're doing two and three and four years research, and they have some different questions. We want them to come see exactly what we're doing and what they're looking at. We'll have a particular customers looking at a particular floor plan. Yeah. And they'll call us and ask when that particular floor plan is coming down the assembly line, and we'll coordinate that with them. We don't have things to hide here. We want to show people what we're doing here for building. It's absolutely fantastic. And doing the tour a couple of years ago is ultimately the reason we decided to buy an Outdoors RV. We were just so impressed with the quality. And that shows every step of the way. Everyone here, you can tell, it's like a family. People are building these RVs here. And we, we really, really enjoyed seeing that again today. If you have too, hopefully it's given you some ideas of some of the questions that you might want to ask about an RV you're thinking to buy. I would definitely recommend checking out Outdoors RV. We've been living full time in ours now for just over a year and it's been working out great for us. We've put it through its paces uh, and at every possible opportunity, it has done exactly what we've asked of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you've got some questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer those questions. See you next time.